We're going to go over the GH joint, scapulothoracic joint, uh, kind of intro upper and lower core, and the IISSS. You probably have heard it. You have other words for this. IISSS is the core. I just hate that word. Uh, Shape Magazine has destroyed it for me. Um, you have three cores. Your scapulothoracic joint, your IISSS, and your hip abductor and pelvic floor. We're going to teach you how to work on all of them because that's what's going to make you the battleship. The rest of this should happen as a whip. Uh, upper extremities and trunk. So the GH joint, uh, tons of uh, range of motion that's required here. We talked about how external rotation is directly related to the ability to throw hard. So 120, 125, 130, you're seeing that in the guys who are the highest level. So, you know, I work with a professional pitcher, it just spins all the way back. But at the same time, if they're not in pain, it spins all the way forward. 180 degree arc, usually 170 is good. The ones who are hurt, most times are going to come to you, all of this, and no runway, no brakes. Or the brakes are the muscles, and so those are weak and inflamed, and the brick wall, which is the posterior glenohumeral ligaments, are going to be way short. So you're not giving yourself enough room. 7,000 degrees a second. You can call, you can use this number or, and call whatever you want, but it really does a nice job of describing how fast this movement is. And there are guys throwing much harder than 90 miles an hour. 7,000 degrees a second is the angular velocity at ball acceleration. How many times does that spin your arm around? Like 100? I don't know. It's I'm not good at math. Anyway. Uh, 950 newtons is the distractive force at that point. The glenohumeral ligament only withstands about 1,200. It'll be ripped out. And so what stops it? Everything that's kind of the foundational musculature and all that. Here, just those numbers again. I put them down for you. At least I left all the important stuff. Here we go, scapulothoracic joint. Uh, you're gonna work on this with throwers every time you see them. Uh, and if it's strong, make it stronger. And if it's tipped a little, you're gonna be losing it. Retracting the press is everything. So we're gonna say it a lot. You're gonna hear it a lot. Retracting the press, retracting the press. I wish there was one word for it. It would just make better sense. And maybe you guys can coin one word for it. The T-spine. Rotation to that side is going to give us more scapulothoracic and glenohumeral movement. I have literature for you on that one. You can save your pen. Uh, elevation, abduction, segmental rotation toward that side. It's also a foundation for our ST muscles, and it's also going to rotate, anti-rotate towards the glove side when we're falling on the other side. So its ability to move is more runway. You have to get all of that ability back. Very typical, and actually when you see us uh, demonstrate some of these things. Mine's awful. That's why I'm not throwing anymore. Uh, but you're going to see pretty frankly, like I can't rotate toward my dominant side, toward my right side. If I wanted to get back to throwing or get better at golf, I should be doing that more. I'm just, you know, whatever. Doctor treats myself. Lumbar spine is the stability segment for a lot of what we're doing here. It has to have some mobility, but it's the middle of the trunk. It's the R triple S. R triple S really just describes kind of every muscle between every segment and then all the muscles that kind of line them. We'll talk very specifically about them kind of how to treat them, how to find problems with them. And the hips. Um, talk in these terms, stance leg, stride leg. Okay, stance leg, stride leg. Which is your dominant side, Timmy? Oh. Which do you throw with? Talk in their language, and they're gonna go, oh man, I gotta come back here. My PT understands baseball. Um, during throwing, okay, lots of single, in single leg stance is important. Okay. Maximum power in extension and external rotation requires a lot of stability. Okay. You're going to find, too, that there's different requirements in the non-dominant, the stride leg, and the dominant side, which will go into how you measure them and why you would measure them in the way you would and how you would do strength and all those things. Foot and ankle, we usually don't see as like a big problem, not any more than you would see any athlete. We're going to talk about Taylor Cruel movement. We're going to talk about mobility, stability at the ankle and foot. Um, but if you can treat an ankle on a runner or someone who just sprained their ankle, you're probably going to see very similar problems in baseball players. It's not like, oh, I see a baseball player and I have to look at that ankle. I have to look at the contralateral hip. I have to look at ST joint. I have to look at the GH joint. Test for internal and external impingement. I have to do those things. So when we're framing everything here today is about what do throwers look like. So Still's awesome, right? He's still great. Try this. Just call out what's wrong. I just drew the line for you. We've seen this picture a couple times. Anti-rotation, okay? Negative movement. 
Where should that go? That's more upright. More upright or home? But upright, yeah. I could have added a little more lines here. What do we call that? Inverted, Inverted W. w. That's a huge red flag, huge. That means elbow is gonna get in the way. <sighs> He's not yet got 90 degrees, you can't even see it in this picture, unfortunately. Look at that front side being big and open, so he's slower. He will make up for it with power, with strength. These guys are the best at this. That front side does not close up, and so here's the picture from before. The picture from before had it a little more up here. This is more like it. Um, this is a little late, obviously. He's actually already kind of throwing the ball, so this elbow is still a lot in, in front or in even, but it looks better in this picture than otherwise. This should be there. This should be here. He should be much more horizontal there. And then, which way is he falling? Okay, pick those things up. Now we're gonna do some analysis. We're gonna watch some videos. Slow motion and full speed, and you're gonna pick it up. Can I ask a question? Sure. So why do those guys still get drafted? Even though, I mean, because they still throw 100 miles an hour. But they he still can do it. But the people drafted don't see that there's gonna be problems down the road? That's a great question. At the highest levels, and even unfortunately in college, um, coaches don't want to tinker too much. Because if you get a guy who's a 100 mile an hour guy, and you tinker because that's going to save his career, but now he's a 94 guy or a 97 guy, they don't want to get saddled with that. You're the guy that ruined Steven Strasburg's ridiculous fastball. So they're going to go, well, it's working. It hurts a little, all right, whatever. Baseball, baseball coaches don't really care about the health of the player, as long as that performance piece of things really works. That's the thing, they're expendable. So it's true. There's always going to be another guy who comes up. It is true. Down the pipe, they can throw 100 if Steven Strasburg stops throwing 100, he ain't playing, number one. Um, maybe somebody will jump in there. Or Verlander. Verlander is one of the most efficient, powerful guys there is. He's going to throw 100 for a long time. He actually throws harder as games go on, which is amazing. Um, but coaches don't like tinkering. And college, too, it's unfortunate. Uh, they go, well, you're kind of here, and I don't want to mess it up, and I don't know about medicine. That's the training staff, because the training staff obviously knows about medicine, right? Okay, so now we kind of understand where we're coming from. So they really don't fix them because they don't want to get fired. Uh, okay, let's check out some videos. Obviously, we've seen this one already. This is a cool one. Super slow motion. It's about 60 seconds. Unfortunately, this is what most pitchers look like under their jersey. I don't... <laughs> take any of the responsibility for that. Um, and the thrower's coil is cool because you'll see it in his blubber. Uh, call out the phases. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Early, Early cocking. Where does hands go? Way, Way away. Way away. This is not great, but it's not terrible. We've seen worse. Call out the phase. Right. Late cocking happens when his foot hits the ground. So right. There. Look at that. This is pretty. Not perfect, but really nice. Look at this. Way better than Steven Strasburg. Oh, this guy's just at ASMI. He's not going to pitch in the major leagues. Um, what do we got? Ball acceleration. What? Decel and ball through is nice. It's actually kind of straight up and down. So, eh. This is a nice criterion move.